I, I thought, oh man, there's gonna be some egotistical, just... What about me? It's like, I thought it would be like an ego trip, but it was actually pretty fun and the sort of Trekkies, sort of, you know, you go to conventions, you talk to people. I like Trekkies and Trekkies too, which is a documentary on... And she, like, the, the importance of Nancy, like... I like the fact that, she, you know, she's trying to find Nancy and they're like, no, they wanted it. Oh, there was a toy of Nancy, but it's discontinued. <laughs> It's like seven minutes, but uh, it's it's a documentary I would actually buy. I mean, it looks interesting, but I think some people would be like, "Oh, is this a little bit egotistical for her to do?" But I don't know. I didn't mind it at all. <laughs> um, you got one called "For the Love of the Glove," <clears throat> which basically talks about the glove. And what's interesting, I like this feature because the beginning it talks about how the glove, the original glove, was stolen around part two. And they actually meet with the guy who has the original glove, and he found it on eBay. And I, okay, that's bullshit. But then you have David Miller, the guy who was the special effects guy on the first one, there with the guy, and the look like the guy has all these collections of gloves from different films, and like he has the original glove, and David Miller's like, yeah, it looks like uh, the real thing. So the original glove has been found, and this guy has it, and. That was really cool. And then they talk about all these people online who make gloves. And it's really strange because like, a lot of them, you see them sharpening knives. And go, you're making gloves and you're sharpening the knives? Isn't that, you know, <laughs> that's kind of weird. I suppose it's for order. So it's like ordering weapons. <laughs> I thought it was strange. Then you have, uh, like, Fred has the ultimate, uh, what was it, Freddy fans. It's like, 13 minutes long. I wrote them down actually, just so I could be clear on it. And it's about, you know, people who were in love with Freddy Krueger and like the collections they have. A lot of the collections they have and, you know, tattoos that they've gotten and, <coughs> yeah, the same guy again who has all these molds from uh, the films and which was a cool, another cool aspect. Um, they have Horror's Hollow Grounds, Number in Elm Street, which is around 20 minutes. And uh, it's like the one they did for Halloween, 25 Years of Terror, where they, they go through all the locations of the original Nightmare on Elm Street. So they go to the Elm Street house, they go to the school. <coughs> and uh, yeah, they sp actually spend time with like Heather Leggencam going through the house, Amanda Wise going through the alley. <coughs> There's a funny scene too, where you have Robert. It's like the guy he's showing the locations. Robert Rusley comes up. I don't know if I should spoil it, but I'm not gonna spoil it. It's Robert Rusler and Marshall Bell from Part Two uh, show to show up. There's some funny stuff. I don't want to give it away now that I think about it. I don't want to give it away. I want people to buy this and check it out. You know, I'll give some away, but that's that's a pretty funny sequence. I'm not going to give away. <coughs> There's one on the Andrew Video Game Nerd. But the thing of it is, it's sort of like him sort of creating it, and they show a little bit of the review, but they don't show the whole review of the Andrew Video Game Nerd for the Elm Street game, which I thought was weird. They show a little bit, but it's like, why don't they show the whole thing? Like, why didn't they just show the whole thing from beginning to the end? I, I mean, they probably had the time. It just, it was... <clears throat> they showed a little bit, it was cool. But it was like, why didn't they show the whole thing? So that was strange. <clears throat> the most disappointing one was probably expanding the Elm Street universe, Freddy and comic books and novels. It's like 15 minutes long. <clears throat> and I'm sorry to Mike OCB Communications, it's not about the, the novelizations of the movies. It's more about, it talks about some of the comic books that was made, like you have the guy who did the Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash comic book. Um, some couple people who did some of the books. It was interesting, including a woman, she made a book. It was like, you have geeky, nerdy girls who decide to do a Columbine type thing with their school. But instead of using guns or bombs, they use Freddy. <clears throat> I thought that's an interesting idea. 
So what's interesting is just <clears throat> that's probably one of the main four pro problems I have with it. That you know, I would have liked to have seen the novelizations and you know, there have been more books like I know I have over here. There's a making of uh, Nightmare on Elm Street book up to Freddy's Dead, and they could have done a lot more with it. I thought. One thing that they could have done more was that the music of the nightmare conversation with composers, songwriters. They talked with Dokken, they talked with Charles Bernstein, a little bit with uh, the people who did the score for part one, part two. Um, they talked a little about part three, and then part, uh, what was it, uh, seven. <clears throat> one interesting thing is that Lisa Zane, who played Freddy's daughter, um, she recorded a song for Freddy's Dead that wasn't used. And you actually hear a little bit of it. Which I'm glad they didn't use. It's pretty bad, but it was interesting. Like, I've never heard of that before, and you get to hear it. But it's like, why? I mean, they talk a little bit with Dokken, but... I would like to hear more about the score for Part 2, because I'm a big fan of it. And of course, the same guy would go on to do Hellraiser and all types of scores. But and the fly too you know I want to hear a little bit more from that guy why didn't we hear from anything about the scores for part five or uh, Freddy's dead like the Goo dolls and you know mention that stuff uh, I thought that could have been longer uh, also uh, that one uh, about seven minutes on Elm Street poster boy the art of Matthew Joseph Peake he did those beautiful posters from part one to part five and he did like the album of Freddy's Dead, not the poster, but like there was an album and he did the artwork for that. Like one interesting thing is that in the first Elm Street movie, there's actually a little snake-like creature in the Elm Street poster, and that was his sort of take on Dreamscape, sort of intentional. And once again, Dreamscape's mentioned. But that the only thing I was disappointed about that is that they didn't talk much about Part Four. They mentioned part three, why all those people are on the Elm Street 3 poster and how come they're not like the people in the movie. He talks about that. And then they talk about part five, how originally it was a baby that Freddy was holding inside, but instead they changed it to the carriage. But I don't. they skipped on part four poster, which is one of my favorite posters, so that was disappointing. Um, Nightmare on Elm Street in 10 minutes is basically you have everybody in the from all the films basically saying their lines or going from part 1 to part 10 like saying their lines or telling the story of the series kind of I don't know it was cute but kind of whatever so that's all the stuff on there um, you've you, uh, it's a great documentary. It's a great DVD set. You find a lot of info. It's, gra it's great to see a lot of people. Even how some people have changed. Like Tuesday night, she's changed. I mean, she's much more... I know that's mean, but I shouldn't talk about looks. But... And the girl who played... Uh... Remember in Freddy's Dead, the girl who would uh, fight in the... Who had the abusive father and would fight Freddy and like she would train with Yafakaro on the punching bag that girl I'm not going to give away what she looks like now but when you see it you're like what the fuck like immediately I'm like psycho you know and she has a, a, a woman I don't know if it's her lover or I don't know if it's her her Slave or like her groupie or someone like hanging on to her leg the whole time. She does an interview and it's like, what the? F I, <laughs> you know, you watch it and you'll you'll know what the hell I mean. I won't give it away because people will be like, what the fuck? But um, I want to go go on the. I wrote down four things that I wanted. It is the best documentary of the three. It's a great job they did. Uh, out of if I did like scores for these things, I don't really do scores. But okay, say uh, 25 Years of Terror would get an eight out of ten. His name was Jason would get a six or seven out of ten. 
This would get a 9 out of 10. The reason I don't think it's perfect, 10 out of 10, I mean, I say 9.5 out of 10, actually. There's four things I wanted. Number one, some of the, I would have liked to hear more from Lisa Wilcox and Ken Sados and Andres Jones. They, I mean, they talk, and you hear some interesting stories. It's just, you don't seem like you... I wanted to hear more from Ken Cyrus. It's like he's not in it enough. Lisa Wilcox is not in it enough for me. I think that's more a personal thing. I mean, Lisa Wilcox and Ken Cyrus, I liked hearing from them. I wanted to hear more. Lisa Wilcox still looks beautiful. Ken Cyrus is still Kincaid. Um... 